What is good YouTube, it's your boy OG Nomboy, back with another video, and in today's video I have a team featuring Shadow Obama Snow, Sableye, and Lantern. So, Shadow Obama Snow has been kind of rising in popularity lately as it's touted as a core breaker to the Noctowl and Lantern core. So, I decided to test this out for myself, and these battles were played actually about a week ago today on Go Battle Day. So, these are some pretty old battles, but um, let's see if the Shadow Obama Snow is actually kind of worth the hype i guess so first match we have a skarmory lead so this obviously is not a great lead for us so we're gonna pivot into our safe swap of the sableye your opponent actually staying in here for a bit so this is gonna desync our switch timers which may give us some um, interesting play here later on in the match looks like they don't really have a direct hard answer to the sableye so they're staying in just to chip it up a little bit and they bring in a Swampert here, so I'm going to be able to get the Hydro Cannon off on the CMP tie. And this isn't actually too bad for us. I'm going to bring my Obama Snow in immediately, and I'm going to go straight for the Energy Ball as I anticipate them not shielding it up since they probably want their Skarmory on this. And their Swampert already has gotten its use. So I'm going to throw the Energy Ball here, take out the Swampert, and opponent waiting out the switch timer but i think we should be able to take them out before they're able to switch out because of the desync and we're able to get this surf off this will take out the skarmory if it decides not to shield so opponent actually shielding that and then they have a mew in the back so actually a very interesting team but we should be in a pretty dominant position here especially since we still have two shields and the wild charges if they decide to go for them end up debuffing them and i'm going for surfs here since you do need two moves to take out the new from this range so might as well go for the two cheaper moves instead of doing like 80 percent with the thunderbolt and then having to throw another surf anyway so um now our switch timer is almost up so i'm going to shield this move safely and then i'm going to bring my shadow obama snow in so um I'm gonna farm down this Mew here and I do allow them to get to the move and throw just because I don't want their Skarmory to get extra farm and I'm going to throw the Surf here on the Skarmory and then I'm just going to spark down the Mew to win this match here so next match we have a Obama Snow into Bastidon so most likely honestly if you do see a Bastidon Jeez, I can't even speak. A Bassiodon lead. You're just gonna lose just because you don't really have um, a place for your Obama Snow to go, right? So you already lost the lead, and then you're gonna swap in either your Lantern or your Sableye. Um, I mean, most likely your Sableye, just because your Lantern does have a better matchup against a Bassiodon, and uh, your Sableye is more or less the soft counter. But typically, when you see Bassiodon lead, you see. A Sableye and Metacham or like a Trevenant and Metacham or Grass Hole. So in the event it's Grass Hole, you might be okay. But with Grass Hole, they can actually maintain alignment against your Sableye, right? Like the Victory Bell can double shield or they can single shield and farm your Sableye all the way down and maintain alignment. And in the event that it is Metacham, even if we're able to win switch back like we did here, your Obama Snow has nowhere to go. So... Um, they're just going to stay in here with the Bastiodon. They're going to take out my Lantern and then, um, well, we'll see what's in the back. So we'll see if it actually ends up being the Metacham, like most of the time it is. But I'm going to stay in here, try to play this out, get the Surf off. Because in the event it is a Grass-type Pokemon in the back, our Obama Snow would be doing pretty well. So no need to forfeit the match yet at this point. But uh, it does end up being a Metacham, so this is exactly as predicted. And a lot of times, when there is a Metacham in the back line on these teams, they are running the Power Up Punch instead of um, the Ice Punch. So this makes the dot like matchup against other Steel types and whatnot a lot more dominant for the Metacham, and we end up losing that match there. So next match, we have a Bomb Snow into Altaria, but we actually end up getting jabated. So go battle day was um some type of day for the go battle league a lot of just entering battles and not being able to find an opponent for a really long time or just situations like that where you literally get to see their lead pokemon and then get quit out but next match here we have a lantern lead so they swap into frostlass i'm going to swap into the sableye here and the thing is with this matchup is even though 
it may seem pretty dominant you kind of have to commit the first shield here since if you don't commit the first shield and they're able to land the avalanche they can just decide to shield up and they're actually going to be able to powder snow you down um, and go down a shield and maintain alignment so knowing that we're going to cmp tie them on this next foul play i decide to just continue farming um just to get this extra energy here and opponent deciding to bring in the Alteria. So now we know the opponent's whole team. Um, so we remember that there's a Lantern lead. And they're going to be trying to farm us all the way down it seems here. So we're definitely going to have to bring our Lantern into this Alteria. Because we do not want to take a Sky Attack on our Obama Snow here. And the Obama Snow has a very dominant matchup against the Lantern. So... Gonna eat the Moonblast here, gonna bring in the Obama Snow just to farm down this Alteria. Seems like they were trying to make it to a Sky Attack, but they actually weren't quite able to get there. So I'm going to throw the Energy Ball here, and the opponent realized that the game is over, and they concede the match. So Next match here, we have a pretty difficult lead in an Alolan Ninetales, so they're gonna be able to get to these Weather Balls the same time we get to our Weather Balls, really, but... Um, Obviously, we can't really go for weather balls, whereas they can. So, gonna go have, gonna have to go for a energy ball here, or we could have baited as well. But um, now I want to swap into the Sableye, which might seem like an interesting play, but they have to take a dazzling gleam to um, KO us. They have to throw a dazzling gleam rather. So um, we do get baited there, and I'm going to do a bait of my own here with the foul play. But opponent actually ends up not shielding that. So. Now we're in a little bit of a sticky situation. I'm going to shield this again just to, um, in case it's a Death and Gleam, but they throw a Weather Ball, and then, so I know this is just a Weather Ball. So I'm going to farm them all the way down. And it ends up being a Trevenant in the back. So now I'm going to be able to take them out since they decide to let it go. And they have a Registeel in the back, so... This is a pretty comfortable position for us now, just because we have a full health Obama Snow in the back. Or not Obama Snow, Lantern rather. And we should be able to tag team this Registeel here. So Zap Cannon coming through, thankfully not debuffing us, gonna go for the Thunderbolt here. And we should just be able to outpace the Registeel, not on our Lantern, but between our uh, other two Pokemon in the back too. So our Sableye, because we are the Ghost type, we are double resisting the lock-ons and we will be able to probably reach a foul play before they're able to take us out and yeah we also do have our obama snow as well so i'm going to bring in the obama snow here we really just have to get to a um energy ball here and they try to catch a weather ball on their nine tails but uh, we keep farming and then they can see the match there so in the final match here we are actually met with the dream lead in the Altaria but as you can see here their dragon breaths are doing almost as much as our double super effective powder snows from a shadow pokemon so that just kind of goes to show how strong the dragon breath on Altaria is but we're gonna go ahead and throw this weather ball since you can't really try to farm that thing all the way down as you will be taking a lot a lot of damage so i'm gonna bring my sable in here see if i could bait something out in the back a lot of times with the alteria you'll see either double steel or you'll see like azumarill and swamper or something like that so i'm gonna bring sable in here we bait out the azumarill and since we were quite ahead on energy we actually will be able to put the azumarill quite low here which will put it in a nice farm down range for our lantern so um i'm gonna stay in here hopefully get taken out by this move but the opponent actually decides to go for an ice beam so they get one extra bubble in and if that's the case most likely the opponent is running uh the hydro pump and ice beam so i'm gonna go ahead and let this go it doesn't really matter what this is honestly but ends up being the hydro pump and now we have a thunderbolt locked and loaded for the alteria and they're able to catch a move on the alteria i undercharge this which honestly, like, I don't really know if that was that necessary since we end up having to catch a move here on our Bomb Snow anyways. And at this point, I'm going to go for two Surfs. 
just because I don't know if a Thunderbolt plus the Sparks will actually quite KO from here. And since we do have a shield, this is just the safer way to play since I know I will be able to get to both of these moves guaranteed. As it does take six um, of the counters to get to a Mud Bomb on the Toxic Croak. So, able to go 4 1 in the set. And honestly, like it did seem to perform well in this set in particular, but overall, um, with all the Basket on and kind of like Galarian Stunfisk leads around and that sort of thing, and even Noctowl leads too, you don't do particularly well against those just because you are still taking super effective damage from the wing attacks. And if they decide to take it to the two shield scenario, you're actually put quite low, even though you do still end up winning that matchup. But, um, yeah, I don't know. So if you want to give it a try, go ahead. Um, I think Jonkis also made a team with Shadow Obama Snow that uh, featured the House Stark team, which he used to hit Legend, which features Obama Snow, Sableye, and instead of the Lantern, I believe it's a Metacham. So go ahead and try that out instead if you're so inclined, but uh, definitely worth looking at if you want to try something new. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and also submit your battles in the link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next one.